Hello Planeswalkers, Tyler here, and today I'm bringing you the first episode of my new series, Tribal Talks. On this show, I take a look at a creature tribe that I think could use a little bit more support and attention. I take a look at what creatures currently exist in said tribe, what support spells they currently have, and what I think could be done to give them a little more relevance in the commander format. But before I get to that, let's take a quick look at what I mean by tribe. Wizards defines the word tribe as magic slang for a block, set, or deck with a mechanical theme centered around one or more creature types. For the purpose of this series, I'll be focusing on the creature aspect of tribes, as that's my favorite way to play commander. While we're here, I'm also going to say that changelings are excluded from the running. Yes, yes, I know they exist in all colors and technically be used to fill in any creature type, and thanks to Modern Horizons giving us more of on the boundless, every tribe can now have a tribal leader, but I feel like that's a bit of a cop-out. When I play a tribe, I do it because I like the aesthetic of the creatures I'm playing, and I mean, look at them. Gross. Mm. <laughs> and with all that little bit of housekeeping out of the way, let's move on to the topic of today's video. Hippos! The big round murder horses of the water! Hippos are a primarily green creature type, first appearing in Visions with the later eroded Pygmy Hippo, and showing up a year later in Urza's Saga with Bull Hippo. It wouldn't be until 2017 in Amonkhet when we would see the creature type again with Defiant Great Maw, and Rampaging Hippo in the set afterwards, Hour of Devastation. As of writing this, we would then only receive one more Hippo in the form of the monoblack zombie, Lazatep Behemoth, in 2019's War of the Spark, leaving us with a grand total of five creatures bearing the type Hippo. Outside of these five, there are three cards that could create Hippo tokens. The mouth half of Amonkhet's Mouth to Feed, which makes a 3-3 green hippo, and both Plane Shift's Questing Feldegriff and Alliance's Feldegriff, who both aren't actually hippos themselves, despite appearances, but who do make 1-1 green hippos that you give to an opponent. Also worth noting, to mock me personally, four of the nine hippo creatures that are listed on Gatherer are hippogriffs. So that's what we have to work with. Three mono green hippos, one blue green hippo, one black hippo, two three colored creatures that can make hippos for other people, and half of a sorcery. Combined with the wide collection of abilities between the members, ranging from the bull hippo's island walk, to the pygmy hippo's mana draining, to the great maw's minus one minus one counter synergy, it's safe to say that this beloved tribe of fat, violent water cows aren't quite showing a united front. So that leaves us with the question, what can we do to make hippos a more cohesive tribe? Well, I've got a couple of ideas. Of course, there's the most obvious option in print more hippos. There's tons of planes throughout Magic's multiverse that could conceivably have them, like Zendikar, Dominaria, New Phyrexia if we want some sick oiled monstrosities, or even just revisiting Amiket sometime in the future would be a great way to inject a few more hippos into the game. But that leads us to our second issue, which is synergy between the tribe members. As I stated earlier, there's next to no real consistencies between the few hippos that we have, aside from green being their primary color. A few common themes need to be established within the tribe if they're to thrive. Now I don't think that's all that hard to put together, really. As a starting point, let's keep hippos in green for the most part, but let them splash into blue and even black. This would let them fill a role that's not really infringing on the similar niche that two other tribes, elephants and rhinos, tend to have. We'll get to them in a minute. Green as a main color already makes sense, since hippos are big, stompy creatures, which green already loves, and letting them have blue also fits for flavor reasons because hippos are semi-aquatic as is. 
While yes, blue is the color of knowledge and pure arcane wizardry, something hippos really do lack, it is also the go-to for anything that lives in the sea, a la merfolk, krakens, fish, and the like. I also like the idea of hippos having access to black, not just because Lazatet Behemoth is there, but because hippos are incredibly dangerous creatures by nature. It isn't really that hard for me to try and imagine a 3-3 hippo that costs for, let's say, four and a black, that has sacrifice a creature to gain some life. Hippos may be herbivores, but those teeth and that crushing jaw can absolutely rip and tear if the need arises. So with color identity settled, things segue quite nicely into the next set of ideas, that being mechanics. While it would be fair to assume that some hippos could do outlandish things at the higher rarities, I think having a small pool of abilities to draw from would go a long way in unifying them as a whole. Looking at what we already have, we could easily set aside a few building blocks to start from. Let's start with the power and toughness levels. We've got Bull Hippo and Mouth to Feed that both revolve around 3-3, the Feldergriffs both revolve around 1-1, and the bigger boys like the Behemoth, the Great Maw, and the Rampaging Hippo give us a 5-4, a 4-5, and a 5-6 respectively. I like hovering around between 3 to 6 for these values for hippos because it's generally where we see large green beasts throughout the game. Any bigger, like say 7-7 seven, seven and up, we start to get to the more mythical range of creature sizes. So keeping them grounded as solid blockers and attackers seems like a perfectly fair ceiling to me. As far as actual keyword mechanics would go, I think Trample should be a mainstay for the bigger hippos. Hexproof is another ability that I'd make an argument for, referencing how thick a hippo's hide can be. I'd also like the idea of putting Flash on a few, as hippos are known for pulling out lightning quick reflexes from seemingly nowhere. If it's the flavor of someone peacefully walking down the river bank, when all of a sudden they're set upon by a two-ton mound of flesh, teeth, and rage with no warning. Should Landwalk ever return as a mechanic in a similar vein to the way Protection did, I could see Island Walk being a staple amongst most hippos. For those that are aligned with black mana, I could see including Bloodthirst or a Discard Effect or even Menace. Play a hippo, discard some cards to symbolize how much hippos tend to eat, make it so only two or more creatures can block that thing because it's an absolute unit, and then use the discarded cards as fodder later for reanimation shenanigans. So what does that give us? Well, we have a few colors to pick from, a general size range for them to fall into, and a handful of keywords that we could see. We could see various combos of all these mixed in at the common or uncommon rarities, but at the rare and mythic slots you could give us some bigger hippos with fewer downsides to make them even bigger threats. As far as non-creature support goes, we do have a large plethora of artifacts, enchantments, sorceries, and instants that help a chosen creature type as a whole. So I think we're fairly well off there. That all being said, I'd still like to see some more token generators for hippos, outside of just the two Feldegriffs and Mouth Defeat. A legendary creature wouldn't go amiss either, similar to how bears got Gorkla and Ayula, and dragons have way too many to feasibly list. If all that isn't enough, I do have one more idea that I think could work really well. Remember earlier when I mentioned elephants and rhinos? Well, both of those creatures got something a little extra in addition to their purely animalistic counterparts, and that's a sentient race, with the loxodons for elephants and the rocks for rhinos. Now imagine a race of hippo-headed people bearing creature types like Hippo Monk, or Hippo Soldier, or Hippo Cleric. They could even get a similar sounding name, something like, I don't know, the Coxodonts. And that way we could build a deck that's all locks, rocks, and co- <laughs> And there you have it. My thoughts on how we can bring hippos into the modern age of Commander as a viable tribe. If we can get maybe 20 to 25 more hippos printed that work somewhat decently with each other, I'll be the first in line to brew that deck. But that's all the time that we have for today. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Tribal Talk. 
Be sure to leave a comment down below for what tribes that you would like to see me cover in the future or which tribes you would just like to see get more support in general. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell so you never miss an upload. Once again, this is Tyler, and thanks for watching.